Hi guys, welcome to Learn Electronics Repair. And today we're going to have a look at Mr. Bleep. This is a project, if you've been watching the previous videos, sponsored by PCBWay, and it was designed and built by myself and my co-conspirator, Detlef. Hello guys. <laughs> and I thought he was going to say, hey, nerds. <laughs> yeah, I was trying for that. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying something new. You know that uh, Will Wheaton does the hey, nerds in his show? Yeah. I didn't know this. So, so uh, this isn't stolen. I quite a bit to this one. Hey, nerds will still do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do they say? That uh, something about like copying things is the best flattery or something? Oh, yeah. Imitation is yeah. the best form of flattery. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, Mr. Bleep, what is it, if you've not seen it before? Well, we have two versions. This is the standalone version. Yeah, it looks a little bit strange because when we made the prototype PCB, these holes are the wrong size and these connectors will not fit through. That wasn't my fault. I won't tell you whose it was, but... <laughs> it's a revision zero. It's a revision yeah. zero. There okay. must be errors in there. Okay. That's why it's not a revision zero. Of course, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so this is our little tester, and you can see it consists basically of a voltage regulator, another thing that looks like a voltage regulator, but it's a constant current source, and a little microprocessor, and a bleeper. Oh, and an LED. So, the LED, that's appeared, yeah, from yeah. the original... The totally useless one. ...design, and this is... Detlef's totally useless LED, but in actual fact, it's quite useful. So I'll show you what this does, and I will also explain why it's useful. Okay, so what's Mr. Bleep all about? Well, it's about the fact that multimeter manufacturers don't seem to make their multimeters with a feature that I believe most repair guys actually want. But the crazy thing is, this feature is just software. So, how this came about is due to my fluke multimeter. And this wasn't a fluke, but this is a fluke. <laughs> okay, so the fluke multimeter. Now, this has, like most multimeters, and somebody just tidied up my uh, test leads. <laughs> 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 Probably the same person who said you should cut your fingernails when you're doing electronic repair when they saw me on the channel and I couldn't do anything, pick anything up basically. <laughs> so, this is the Fluke Multimeter and this does something a little bit special. And what it does is, if you go to the diode mode and you touch the leads together, it bleeps continually. Now, that isn't anything particularly strange. The interesting thing is when you take a diode, you get a short bleep. It reads the voltage like any multimeter will do in diode mode, but you get a short bleep. Take another diode, we get a short bleep. But you'll see this one's different. It's a Schottky diode. This is the voltage drop. I can see that by looking at the meter, but without looking at that meter, and you can't see what I'm doing, but you can tell if I'm probing a short or if I'm probing a diode. This means when I'm going around the PCB looking for junctions and such like, I don't need to look what's happening. This, I can hear what's happening. This is one of the things you, when you when you see it, you think, this is so obvious. Why didn't I think of this? Well, yeah. I know the people, I know one who did, did think of this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I believe Fluke thought of it first and I picked up on how useful it is. Yeah, but you had the, the rest of the idea. I had the rest of the idea, yeah. too. So, I'm going to just show you this. You can't see the multimeter, guys. You can hear it, yeah? So, when I'm probing around on this board, I say, oh, that's a semiconductor junction. I don't need to look at the meter. If I want to know if it's a shot key or normal, yes, I can look at the meter. I can say that's a another junction i'm sure if i find two things connected to each other i can say that is effectively a short see that's just a diode junction diode junction we'll go to something like a coil short okay and i can do that looking at what i'm working on i don't need to look away to look at the meter that means i don't sort of come back and forget where was i that's what would normally happen to me if i had to look away yeah so that's why this feature is so useful 
<laughs> the problem is that basically all or nearly all of the multimeter manufacturers don't agree. Yeah, I don't understand this. No, makes no sense. So Mr. Bleep was made to get around this without buying expensive multimeter that will actually do this. There are some in the 30, 40 dollar range that will. It's not only expensive multimeters, but they're few and far between. And if you've got a multimeter, yeah, if you like to collect them, buy another one. This was a cheap way around it. If you've watched the previous videos, we made two prototypes of this. One of them I actually built into a cheap multimeter, and I'll link that video from this one. You can see that working, it worked very well. And then we decided to make a standalone version, which is this one. We've added a little LED display. You can buy these off AliExpress, they're about $1. But this is optional because you can hear what the thing's doing anyway. You don't really need to see that, but it's on there. We added on off switch because that's quite handy. And you can see we have the power LED on. It's massively bright LED. Massively bright, yeah. This is reading 4.31. That's actually the voltage that's now between the probes. <laughs> but this little chip here is a constant current source. That means that the 4.28 volts that we have here is actually at 1.5 milliamps. That's the maximum current that can flow through these. That's enough to turn on a semiconductor junction so you can measure the voltage drop as in diode mode. You can also use this to light LEDs so you can visibly see that they're good, but it's not enough to damage anything. So if we try Mr. Bleep, you'll see we have basically the same function. Short them, we get a continuous bleep. And you'll see this LED goes green. Okay, let's take the diode. So this is one of the diodes we were just testing. And if you were watching, you know one of them is a Schottky diode and one of them is a normal diode. There you that, little bleep, yeah? Short bleep. And the display is reading, if I just angle it where you can see it. One point, sorry, 0.19. 190 mil, mil. Yeah, so that, is a shot key diode, and you'll see the LED is now flashing blue. Yep. The, the reason the LED is useful is for people who are deaf, for example. Or simply tone deaf. Also, yeah. Because uh, if you show the other feature, you, you see while. <laughs> yes, exactly. So yeah. we try the other diode. This is a normal diode. Of course it's the wrong way around. Of course it is the wrong yeah, way around. It must be the wrong way around. <laughs> and we now get a red LED flashing and a different bleep. Okay, it's reading 0.58. Now you'll notice the display is slow. This is just something we bought. We assume you could buy faster ones, but really, just from the audio, it's fast. Yeah. Yeah. The LED and the display are both additional features. You don't need them. You simply can run by audio here. This was the main goal here. Yeah. And uh, we find with a uh, $1 voltage display, uh, we, you can use a more expensive one, of course, uh, that would be faster. But just to check what voltage do I see over here, this is fine. I yeah, think. exactly, yeah. exactly. But the bleep will tell it. And you yeah, can the bleep that. is the most important thing. The reason exactly. why the um, blue LED bleep is a bit uh, lower is the uh, speaker itself. The little bleeper has to have some, some frank frequencies it likes more. And uh, Yeah, yeah. So the little yeah. bleeper, and by the way, this is taken off an old motherboard, uh, scrap motherboard. It is louder at some frequencies than others. It's the frequency response of the speaker mm, that's yeah. making the difference in volume. Absolutely. So you can see this is fast. But you might be wondering how fast is that compared to something like flute multimeter? Hmm. Yeah, because this is all relative. So what we'll do is we'll actually connect the probes together. So I'll disconnect the probes from the multimeter and I will connect some of these cables. Damn, I should have made a knot in there. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> not putting knots in my cables. <laughs> So you can see I've connected those to there. I'm now gonna connect the fluke to here. So the two multimeters will be on the same set of probes in one moment. So we have the 
wires. That obviously going to mess them up. Yeah, which one? <laughs> I <laughs> wondered if it goes no, where. No. no, probably not a good yeah. idea. So we're now connecting the two meters simultaneously. Okay. And now we'll connect the probes. I can connect them here. I'll put them onto the fluke. It's the closest place, actually. Sure. That means they should see things faster before that. How many mm. picoseconds does it take for this electric signal to go down the wire? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's femto. It's femto. Okay. <laughs> so let's see what happens. So you'll hear the bleep from each, and you'll hear one as after the other. Listen. Can you hear this one? Listen. The first bleep is this, the second one is this. Yeah. And for a very short one, this doesn't even react. Okay. This is faster. When we first tried this, I was so impressed because I didn't expect this. No, it really is, a, is. And this is a freaking fluke. What What's the price tag on the fluke here now? Uh, well, this is a used one, which is like 20 odd years old, but mm. even used it probably cost you 60 euros. Mm. New ones, hundreds. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we can do the same with the diode. Again, you'll see this reacts first. In fact, sometimes the fluke doesn't do enough time. Okay. So we know the bleep is about 80 milliseconds in length, and the fluke starts to bleep after this, the bleep, Mr. Bleep bleep stopped. Yeah, exactly. So uh, this is more than 80 milliseconds slower. Yeah, this is freaking fast, guys. This is really, really fast. So I guess you're interested in having one of these. So what's the next step in this project? Well, actually, for a version zero, we're quite happy with this. We're happy with this PCB. If you really want to make those holes a bit bigger, use a file. It's very close to all these, but it's not a problem. You'll probably put this into some sort of enclosure anyway. So, Detlef has also published a video on this project. On his video, and I'll just show you that now, and I'll put the link in the description to this one. On Detlef's video, you see it here. He goes into the actual source code, explains how this works. This is a deep dive into source code, so uh, be prepared to see some horrible C++ code. Uh -huh, okay, <laughs> but if you're interested in seeing the source code or modifying this yourself, if you watch that video, you'll see there's quite a lot of space still in the CPU memory. Yeah, we have more than 50% left. Yeah, more than 50% yeah. left, so you can happily work and modify this. Detlef also has a link, which I'll put on this video also, which you can download the source code, but not the source code. He's giving you the full IDE and portable mode requires no installation. This includes all the libraries, all the links, everything you need. So you know that when you compile this, it will just compile. Yeah, and this is the reason why I don't do GitHub. I can give you a complete IDE with everything included. Yeah, the download is 240 megabytes, but you don't have to fiddle around with libraries. You don't have to fiddle around with cores. You don't have to fiddle around, how do I set this up? No. Because it's all done. You simply start it, choose what one you like. We have the DMM version in there, and we have the standalone version for the CPUs in there. You flash the CPU, and you're done. Yeah, so that is really easy for you guys. Come over to Debt site and pick that up. With a project like this, the best way to upload it is to put it on as a shared project on PCB Way because this easily allows you to bring everything together, the Gerber file, the schematics, and any other information, a link to the video on YouTube if you have a YouTube channel or a video, or to anywhere else. And it also means that if somebody decides to order this project, they just have to make one click. Yes, they can do things like change the PCB core if they so wish, but if they like, just one click, they order, and you, yeah, you, the uploader, gets 10% commission. Okay, so let me show you how easy this is. We're on PCBWay.com now. This is our homepage, and here we have shared projects. And there we have a nice big green button that says create a project. So create a project. What do we need to do? We need a title, Mr. Blake. We'll call him Mr. Bleep. Maybe I should add a little bit more actually what it is. So Mr. Bleep, continuity tester, re 
imagined. That sounds catchy. We can put a category. There are many categories. If we click on here, we can see a whole list of them. There isn't one specifically for test equipment, which is a little bit of a shame, I think. But I can put this down, I think, as DIY electronics. That's kind of covers most things. So DIY electronics. And then we can put a short description in. So I'm just going to put here basically the function of this. There, we have 140 characters. It fitted quite nicely. So Mr. Bleep gives an audible and visual signal for identifying shorts, shot key and semiconductor junctions in circuit. So there's our title. Now we can just add the Gerber file. The Gerber file is here, so Gerber file Mr. Bleep. Okay, open that. There it has rendered our PCB. We can also upload some images here of the completed item. I can come back and do that later. And now we can create a bill of materials. Again, I will add these a little bit later, so when you come to the project, they will be on there. Or I can actually upload a parts list. There's an option here for more information. What software and hardware tools did you use? What app did you use? I'll consult with debt to see what I used. And then we can give some details about the project here. Advanced Continuity and Semiconductor Tester for in-circuit and out-of-circuit fault finding. I can also add on here, for example, a link to the video. Once I've published this video, I'll add that on as well. And I can submit this. I can also put some attachments before I do. We can put the code, you can put the schematic and layout. But I'm actually going to link to the whole thing. We'll put Gerber Schematics and Source Code. Okay, so I've now added the link. I've put them in the one place, but it clearly says Gerber Schematics and Source Code. So you know everything is there for you. I can add the links to both this video and Detlef's video a little bit later when we publish. So when you guys come here, you'll have everything that you need. And people on PCB we can just come on and find this project. So guys, if you like building stuff and designing stuff, or you'd like to make a little bit of extra money from your work, this is exactly how to do it. Submit, success. And now there you can see there we are, the logo, myself, Richard, there we are. And you can see the project there ready for anybody who wishes to, to just build it or add it to the cart. Guys, it's as easy as that, yeah? The whole project is now completed. We're happy with this PCB. I've set it up as a shared project on PCB way. The link is both on Detlef's channel and mine, so you can just follow that link. From PCB way, you can order your PCBs. You have links to the file with the schematics in, with the source code, everything else. If you'd like to work and develop this project further, by all means, feel free to do so and let us know how you get on. When you click on the link to buy the PCBs, you actually get five. As you've seen, if you watch Debt's video, five PCBs per postage will cost you about $10, maybe a little bit less. So build one for yourself, give some more to friends and family because everybody, everybody needs, needs a Mr. Bleep. Yeah, that's the thing, guys. Also, when you do order your PCBs, you get the option to choose what color you want them in. Death prefers black, okay? I prefer red, although I'm not wearing it. <laughs> Obviously, red is better, but what do you think, guys? <laughs> Comments below, yeah. yeah. Let us know your colour choices let here. Let us know your colour choices here. <laughs> There's plenty. You can also have them with gold flash on if you want. Cost you a little bit more if you want the VIP one in red and gold, of course. <sighs> Not black and gold. <laughs> <laughs> it would both look really posh. Uh, Come on, both yeah. look extremely posh. Yeah. <laughs> so, hope you enjoyed that. A project completed this time. And we both look forward to seeing yeah. you soon on our respective channels. Yeah. Let me say thank you for working with us. This was a blast to do this with you. Oh, mate. absolutely, yeah, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely enjoy that. And there's been plenty more with this. And thanks once again to PCBWay, who are now sponsoring my channel and yeah, ZLF's channel. My channel, yeah. Yay. This is my first PCB video in the description down below somewhere. There you go. Yeah. Okay, guys. So, hope you enjoyed that. And we'll see you all soon. Ciao, Ciao for now. For now.